a rainy, cold morning in the usual sunny Queensland in Australia today. We've got some rainbow lorikeets here on the on the railing, sheltering from the rain on our deck. We've got quite a big overhang here on the roof, so they poor little things look like drowned rats today. They're just sitting there, staying dry. I don't know if you can hear that noise, that sort of high-pitched noise over the, the rain, but that's the baby lorikeets asking for food. Really coming down now, isn't it? My goodness. It's okay, you little birds, you just stay there and stay dry, hey? Poor little things. All right. I don't even think I can do a video in this. You guys wouldn't hear me over the rain in my studio. Alright, I'll see you soon. G'day guys. Welcome back. I'm going to do another little placemat pull. But I'm going to use, just because I'm on a roll with the Elmer's School Glue, I'm going to use it again. Uh, let me show you what I'm going to try and achieve. Probably won't be able to do it, but I'll have a go. I'll show you this painting that I did yesterday. Climb up here. Look at that. See that top right corner there? Oh, it looks a bit light. It's actually much darker than that. But I'm going to try and get something like those cells. So that's what I'm going to go for. I've reduced the amount of pink that I put in this painting uh, because the other half of that painting was really quite pale. If you saw that video you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so I need about 200-ish grams of mixed paint for this size. This is a 25 centimeter round placemat. It's just a MDF little placemat. I've got it on a plastic container there to pop it up under off the table and I've used 70% of the Elmer School Glue to 30% of water and then I've mixed my paints 50-50. So one part pouring medium to one part paint. Uh, there's not a lot of paint here because as I only need 200 grams I'm not used to using such little amounts. I usually use like 600 to 800 grams in a pour so 200 didn't have to mix up very much paint. So there's the spot on treadmill silicone that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to put one drop in each. There we go. One little drop. Give that a stir. So hopefully I can get a nice dark background. So my darker colours, these three here, um, I've made up 40 grams of pouring medium to 40 grams of paint. And then my two lighter colours, I've reduced those and just done like 15 or 20 grams of pouring medium and paint. So righto, let's start layering. Now this mix is really quite thick. I found that with the Elmer's School Glue, I have to have a thicker mix. I don't know why, like the glue's thicker than the Elmer's Glue All. It's a much thicker glue when you pour it out. But then once it's mixed, it still looks really thick in the cup, but it acts differently on the surface. So that's, it's a bit strange. I have to make it really, really thick, otherwise my cells all get overstretched. So I'm just having a little practice with the Elmer's School Glue. I don't know that I'll continue to use it. I think I do get better results from the glue all. My cells are better shaped. But let's see how we go on a small surface here. I'm not going to use any more of that pale pink. 
it really took over on my last pull. Really wasn't happy with it. Half of it was really pretty, but then the other half was just like, nah, too much pale pink. Finish off this. This is the plum. I'll show you the colours in a minute once I flip the cup over. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to just do a little tiny drizzle of the pale pink just to separate these two dark colours. So I've ended up with three layers now because I've only done one cup. bit more of this in. I won't use it all. So I haven't used all the pink and I haven't used all the peacock because I want it to be a darker painting. So we have rose and plum. That's all empty now. I need to make some more of that. And my dioxazine purple and the Peacock, that's the pale aqua. And then the blue is just cool blue. Right, so give that a minute. Had a heap of rain here overnight, actually the last few days. It's funny because it's gone from 34 degrees on one day, on Tuesday, down to 24 degrees. This is Celsius. <laughs> Um, on the next day. It was just so nice to wake up and not have really hot weather though. It's lovely. I don't know if it'll hang around though, but it is nice to have a little bit of a cooler night. All right, let's just flip this over and see what happens, hey? There we go. I do like doing the rounds. When I do my sort of long canvases and I do the flips, I always get those definite lines between the, the cups, but you don't tend to get that with the, the round. Although we've got this here. It's a shame that's probably gonna get tipped off, isn't it, when I start tilting. So I've got quite a lot of bubbles there. So let's get to torching. So I'm using my big boy here, my butane torch that I get from Bunnings, the hardware store. Just turn that around like that, squeeze that, and off we go. So nice and high though, it's a big flame. I don't know if you can see the flame, it's a big flame. Be really careful. I do have a fire extinguisher here in my studio. Just to be on the safe side. I don't want to over torch. I'm trying to pop some bubbles. But I can't get close enough to pop bubbles without getting that massive cells that come up. So I'll just do that and then wait. Because that paint's pretty thick there. It's probably about uh, five mil thick. So it takes a while for the heat to come, go all the way down through the paint and uh, bring the oil back up to the surface. torching there. Got some really pretty cells here. They've got the pink surrounding them. So I've got a mixture of opaque and semi-transparent colours in this pool. opaque because it's mixed with a white base which is opaque and my turquoise is opaque and the rings that are coming up around the cells are the opaque ones I'll get you down low later so you can see but there's pink rings around the cells and then there's turquoise rings around the cells 
strange I would have thought it would be the opposite way but it looks like the opaque cells are make well, it's the opaque colors in this instance that are making the rings around the cells I'm just going carefully with the torching because it's only a little surface so I want to make sure I've got enough cells but I really want to be careful not to over torch so I want some background okay I think that will do I wonder if there's anything under this turquoise here okay so that will do nicely I think I don't really like that block of turquoise there um, which way should I tilt first Yeah, I'm not sure what that's going to do so I'll, I'll leave that for now and see what happens when I start stretching that way I'll do down here first I'm just gonna go in a basically just gonna do one big circle and see what happens let the paint drip off as I'm going over that edge because I don't really want to have to come back to the that edge again I may have to but prefer not to, prefer just to go once around actually now that I look at it I don't like that um, turquoise there so let's let it go let it go <laughs> It's a bit difficult to hold on to it once you've covered those edges. You sort of have to put your hand underneath and just balance it. So just be careful. And just take your time. There's no rush. I don't know why people think that they have to flip over and then race to the end. Just take your time. Watch what you're doing. Watch what the cells are doing. I should probably pour that off, hey, because that's the only line as such that I've got on the whole thing. So I can get rid of that, and then I've just got a really pretty background with no lines on it, haven't I? Wow, look at that, you guys. So pretty. I'm just centering it to try and get my cells all to be about the, the same size. So just moving it around so that everything's a similar size right there's my little container there it is what do you think got some quite defined cell colors haven't we we've got the plum here and then we've got the aqua there and then this half is more of the dioxazine purple isn't it I'm just going to see if I can get some of this darker off and bring the lighter down if I can't then I won't worry too much about it stop there I don't want to lose those little purple cells there I like those I think I'll just leave it like that and I'm not totally in love with that cell there but I do love the one next to it so you know you just toss up between what you're gonna keep what you're not gonna keep you're not gonna love everything so there I like that. There you go. Um, Elmer's school glue. It does work. And don't message me saying, oh, you shouldn't be using Elmer's school glue. 
It's not archival and it'll fade and it'll go yellow and it'll do this and it'll do that. Like, you know, if I was selling my art for $1,000 a piece, fair enough. I would be using good, expensive medium, but it's a hobby. It's just for fun. Doesn't matter what you use, guys. Just have fun. If you're obviously a professional artist, then I wouldn't suggest using glue at all. But for what I'm doing and enjoying my art, it is fine. How pretty is that? Hey, that's really pretty. I'll take it down for a close-up. Move these gloves out of the way so we can see properly. I guess it's a little bit darker. <laughs> I said, I said I would regret not putting in more pink, didn't I? Oh dear, you just can't win, can you? The last one was too pink, so I reduced the pink, and now I'm going, oh, there's not enough pink. But I think I've done these colours to death. I probably don't need to do them again. But look at those plum cells, hey? And then up here, we've got the turquoise cells. Really pretty. So if you're having trouble with cells and you know stretching cells and all that, maybe try with something a little bit smaller that you don't have to overstretch things. I had someone else message me and say, when you've done your pour, can't you put it onto a clean pack? piece so that we don't see your your spill it's distracting for goodness sake <laughs> it is what it is how about we go this way look there now you can't see my spill hey some people free education on pouring and not happy still never happy hey never mind okay so there we go Hope you enjoyed that video and uh, I will certainly see you for the next one. Okay, bye for now.